Good evening, everyone. Father Bob Gross here. It's 758 on May 14th, the feast of St. Matthias, uh, bishop and martyr, apostle and martyr. I want to welcome you to our lovely abode in my dining room. And the light uh has been interesting to get to know uh when it comes to doing all these videos right now i have a spotlight that i bought that is trying to give me a good light on my face so hope it does well on my face so um i have to tell you today is one of the days in which uh, as we're waiting for eight o'clock to come today is one of the days in which I am very thankful that I am a celibate priest because I'm going to tell you what I had for dinner. And if you want to tell me what you had for dinner, that's perfectly fine too. Is, do you know what I had? I found these cheese raviolis at Fairway. <laughs> a, awesome. B, I have a couple, actually several, several, bulbs of garlic and i have some green beans and i have some olive oil and i have some salt and pepper and i have some red pepper flakes and i made some beautiful cheese raviolis olive oil with garlic salt and pepper red pepper flakes with green beans and garlic I think there's probably seven cloves to eight cloves of garlic in my meal tonight. And do you know what? I can do that because I'm a celibate priest. And I'm pretty excited about that. So, even though I had all that garlic, I felt guilty that I had that much garlic that I put a piece of gum in my mouth before I did this video. I mean, that tells you how much garlic I had. So, I love garlic. It's just the greatest thing ever. So, all right, it's 8 o'clock. Hope all of you had a nice uh, supper, and I hope you enjoyed the nice uh, day. Um, started off with uh, kind of rain, and then it kind of gradually cleared out, and it was the first experience of uh, humidity today. Um, I was really sweating during my walk today. It was really a, a great thing, really a great thing. So today... What I want to do is talk about today's feast day. Um, for those that weren't able to make it uh, to Mass today, um, there's a couple of things I want to um, update on, on you. That we, at Mass today, we named, we named the bat. Okay, the bat is not out of church, but we named the bat. It's called Bruce the Bat. Okay, so we named the bat. That was good. Number two, we talked about how from the beginning of the church, there have always been Judases and Matthiases. So there are times when we are scandalized by the evil of Judases, those that seem to have their stuff together and then they become corrupt they become corrupt and they fall away from the Lord in a really horrible and demoralizing way. And that's what we saw in the example of, of Judas. So you don't want to follow the example of Judas. But even though there is the presence of the dynamic of Judases, of betrayers to Jesus in the church, which has happened up and down the centuries, there's always in the background and in the quiet background the Matthiases of the church. Because Matthias lived, breathed, ate, drank, and was with Jesus from the time of John, John's baptism all the way to the ascension and to the coming of the Holy Spirit. And Matthias became a witness to that resurrection. So for every single, for every single Judas, there is a Matthias on the other side. So every time there is a betrayal, 
there's someone in the wings who's remaining faithful. And evil news gets the headlines instead of good news. Everyone could agree with me on that point. But what it brings up is just the beauty and the goodness of the Matthiases in our world. And there are so many Matthiases, humble bishops and priests who are literally successors to the apostles. For every person in which there's a struggle or something mixed up within the church, there's always a Matthias who's there to bring fidelity and stability to a parish that may be going through difficulty. And I just think that's a wonderful message. And I'm so thankful for the gift of Matthias to the church, because when you read the story of Matthias in the Acts of the Apostles, he's mentioned in the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles, and then we never hear about him for the rest of the Bible. He makes a cameo appearance. appearance. He becomes the first successor of the Apostles, takes the place of Judas, and brings a sense of fidelity to the thing. So I, I just think that's a wonderful story, and... Um, I wanted to tell the story again because some of you cannot make it to live stream mass during the day. So today what I want to do is just briefly talk about the gospel today. And it comes from my favorite chapter in the uh, gospels, chapter 15. And I just want to read it. And I want to ask you do, you, do you really believe these words? And what do these words really mean? Because Matthias understood them. That's why he was chosen. So let me read these words. Jesus says to his apostles, to his disciples, as the, as the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment, love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain. So that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. I cannot find a better summary of the life of Jesus Christ than this words. Jesus lives these words to the T. So here's the question I want to ask you. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and remain in his love. Is Jesus referring to following the Ten Commandments? Secondarily, yes. But what is the Father's commandments? To stay in communion with me. Open yourself to me. Be vulnerable with me. Surrender to me. Abandon yourself to me. Let me be your Father. Let me provide for you. Do your will instead of your own. Do my will instead of your own will. That's what that means when we say to do the Father's commandments. And then that taps us into the joy that is Jesus's and that joy that wants to be in us. That's why he doesn't want us to be slaves anymore. He wants us to be his friends. So if you have a God image that has God being masochistic and beating you over the head. That's not the true God. Abba, Father, does not want to put any more burdens on you. He wants to lift the burden of sin and misery away from you. And this is just another expression of that same truth that he wants to give you. We don't understand at all the depth of what this gospel is really getting at. Because when we have the joy of Jesus, then the command to love one another becomes a joy. It becomes a labor of love. Think about that. Look at the hard projects that you do. Let's say you buy a rundown house and 
you become, uh, you rebuild it, remodel it. What's it for? It's for the love of your family, the love of making something better for your family. It's not necessarily to make it a best house with no uh, imperfections in it. It's to make a beautiful home for your family to live in. It's for your family. Apply that analogy to Jesus times infinity. And that's what he wants to do for each one of us. That's what we have to stay in. Remain in me as I remain in you. Remain in me. Remain in Jesus. Jesus never leaves us. It's we who leave him. And when we leave him, he wants us to come back to him. See, see, that's, that's why harshness never gets us anywhere. Honesty gets us places. Honest challenge can really shake us to the core. But it's honest gentleness. And uh, I love it. I love this gospel because it's just Jesus sharing his heart with us. How can you get tired of, 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 of that? You get tired of it. You get bored with it because you're really not experiencing it in your life. Because there's probably a block in your life that you're not allowing Jesus to come into. We all got blocks. Is are you had, Do you have the courage to let Jesus touch those blocks and actually remove them? That's the spiritual life. And then the moral life then makes sense. The call to justice makes sense. The call to want to be a part of the church makes sense. The call to be obedient makes sense. The money. All that makes sense and falls in line when you understand God's disposition towards you. So uh, I feel like I'm repeating myself all the time, but guess what? Do you know who was a person that repeated himself all the time, all the time, all the time? He repeated himself all the time was St. John the Apostle. This is the gospel that comes from at the end of his life. He'd be brought out and to give a homily to the little Christian community he was living with. And he gave the same homily over and over and over again. He would say, love one another. That's all he would say, love one another. This is the message we just have not understood completely. Even though you can, you can say, I understand it. I've heard it, Father. If we did, it would be a different world. It would be a completely different world, but we don't get it. So that's why we got to hear it all the time, all the time, all the time. Because my evolution of understanding this gospel is profoundly different than 20 years ago. When I read this gospel 20 years ago when I was 20, I experienced something very differently than what I do today when I'm 40. And it's God's patient love for me that has opened up what these words really mean. And receiving the sacraments day in and day out. Persevering in prayer day in and day out. Sinning and getting back up day in and day out. Asking for forgiveness day in and day out. That's what unfolds and unlocks the secrets of this gospel and the secret of the gospel. So, Anyway, uh, that's all she wrote. So just a reminder, uh, we're very happy to have Father Aaron. Father Aaron gave an announcement. He's coming back. Tomorrow is the Feast of St. Isidore the Farmer. That's going to be a great feast, and we're going to pray. And I want to tell the story of St. Isidore tomorrow because it's pretty applicable to our area even now in 2020 as we're in the midst of growing and planting season. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to have uh, the rosary at 1130 at noon mass. I'll have a morning encouragement and then an 8 p.m. Uh, um, 8 p.m. Uh, update. And then just a reminder that there will be no live stream services uh, on Saturday. That's the day I take off now. And then we'll get back together on Sunday. Uh, we are moving forward on trying to figure out the plans for reopening. Uh, the bishop is looking into those uh, issues. Uh, so please uh, pray for patience, pray for safety, pray for prudence. 
Um, there's nothing more in my heart than wanting to give you the Eucharist. It pains me uh, beyond measure that I cannot celebrate the Mass with you, but o obedience is always the right thing. And um, I'm going to trust Archbishop Jekylls, and he's going to make the right decision for our Archdiocesan Church. And when, when we get together, we're going to figure it out. So God bless you. Please know of my prayers for you, my love for you, the honor to be your pastor, the honor to be your priest on the Internet. I never wanted to be a televangelist, but it took a pandemic. So let's uh, end with our prayer, and uh, we'll send you off to the evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Abba, Father, you are love, and you shared that love with, with the Son, and Jesus became incarnate, and, and the love that you share is the Holy Spirit. Please, be with us this night, and let us receive your love. Let us receive it, Lord, so that we can share it, so we can be conduits of your grace. Mother Mary, you live these words completely. Teach us, Mother Mary, to be worthy, loyal, faithful, and zealous disciples of your son, Jesus. Mary, be with us as we commend ourselves to you tonight. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good evening, everyone. And don't breathe on anybody. Peace.